In a previous video, I showed you your first FireMonkey 3D C++ application. Now we're going to go further into 3D and show how you can use 2D controls inside of a FireMonkey 3D application. So let's say File New, C++ Builder, FireMonkey Desktop Application. We'll do a 3D FireMonkey application. One of the components we can use to provide support for 2D components is a layer 3D. So let's put a layer 3D down. And inside of the layer 3D, we can use all the other components that are available in FireMonkey, buttons and list boxes and check boxes and so on. So let's put a button and let's uh, make that button be a little bit larger. Then we can set whatever properties we would normally work with. So let's say click me, for example, for the text of the button. And if we double click, we get the event handler for the button. And we can just say button one uh, text property is going to get uh, the value 42. We run this example and click on it. Notice that the button and the caption become 42. By default, a 3D form has a design camera that's built in, which lets you see what it looks like at, in the design mode. A layer 3D also has a property called projection, and we can choose that projection to be the screen, and now we get a nice looking uh, straight on view and the user interface, so we can have it not using a camera projection, which is the design camera, which is looking at how we can see it, but we can use the the screen projection. And again, that's the property PJ camera and PJ screen. And we can put other kinds of 2D controls in here. So for example, we can put in a checkbox and have the checkbox have the regular properties you'd work with a check. We'll call this rotate to 3D shape. So we can put in other objects. So for example, I'll put in a, a sphere. And we'll put that sphere down uh, here in uh, the user interface. And we can set its width, height, and depth. And again, it's red by default, that's its material. And we can go over to the object inspector and type material. And again, I showed you in a previous video using the color material source. This time I'm gonna use the texture material source and I can load in a bitmap into the texture. So let's go and load a texture. I've got some uh, textures over here in my sample pictures. One of these is the planet Earth. These are public domain images that you can use and I can associate that texture with the sphere by setting the material source to be texture material source. And now I have this uh, nice little uh, earth. We can scale it up a little bit in addition. So let's make it a little larger. And let's change this layer to be uh, a little bit smaller and put it up at the top as a kind of a control panel and we'll move our... So in this case, I'm gonna use the, the checkbox to start the rotation. So I need to add an animation for the rotation of the earth and we're going to animate the property of the sphere, which is the uh, rotation angle Y. So we can rotate it around and we'll rotate from uh, a start value of 360 and go down to zero. And we'll set that to be a loop. Like I did in a previous video, I'll leave enabled false and then I'll use this checkbox to start it rotating. So again, this nice mix here inside of a 3D FireMonkey C++ application. We've got some 2D controls and a little control panel up at the top. We could even align it uh, to the top of the client area. So it sits at the top and then we've got uh, our planet uh, Earth down here. So let's go and uh, use the checkbox and say that on change, so whenever the checkbox changes, we can set the float animation one, it's uh, enabled equal to a checkbox one, uh, it is checked which is Boolean. So if it's checked, it'll rotate. And if it's not checked, it won't. So let's uh, run this example. And of course it's rotating really fast. And let's, uh, let's go back and set the animation duration to be something a little slower. For example, uh, maybe uh, one rotation every three seconds. So now we've got 2D controls in a 3D layer and we have our sphere here, which is a 3D object that we can rotate. And when we uncheck and we check, it just continues. Let's go back and look at the sphere. Two other properties that I want you to take a look at are the subdivision axes and subdivisions height. The larger the number you specify for these two values, the smoother the sphere will look. If we double the number of subdivisions and if we double the subdivision height, so let's run it again. Now notice it's a smoother uh, sphere. 
than it was before. The default values were 16 and 12, but you can uh, raise that number up. And just to show the texture support uh, with two spheres, let's add another sphere and we'll put it over here on the right. And we'll set its default height, width, and depth uh, to three, and we'll set its scale factor to two. And let's uh, load a texture for this one as well. So we'll say texture material source and give it a bitmap. In this case, uh, we'll choose Mars. And then we'll say that sphere two gets texture two. And now we've got Mars over here on the right hand side. We can also give it a uh, float animation. Maybe it'll take a longer time to rotate. And we'll set it to loop. We want to rotate the rotation angle Y. And now we have two spheres, so we'll rotate uh, the 3D shapes. And here we'll just uh, copy this code and float animation two. And let's run this example. And now we've got uh, we've got both planets rotating. And again, notice this is smoother. And of course, this is a little uh, bumpier, so we can go back on our uh, 3D shape here and set uh, the number of uh, subdivisions. We'll just double them so it looks smoother. And again, we've got that, and the 3D control is working. You can run this on 64-bit uh, windows. And here's the 64-bit app. It's running uh, in the 64-bit bit address space. And we can run it on Macintosh. So just uh, start up the planets rotating. And again, uh, the user interface works. Now let's do one other thing. Let's go to our 3D form and let's turn off use design time camera. And what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll put cameras on the user interface. In this case, we'll put two cameras. So what we'll do is work with camera one and camera two. We'll set them so that they're just pointing uh, at the center of the display. And we'll uh, set their position camera one to be minus 30 in the 3D scene and uh, camera two to be minus 80. And then we'll go to the form and set camera one as the camera that we're gonna use. So it's the closer in camera. We've got it uh, right there. And then we can uh, set camera two. And now notice we're further away from the planets. The other thing we can do is put an animation on one of the cameras to animate the uh, the z-axis for example. So let's choose camera one to do that too. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a float animation and we're gonna put that on the camera. And we're gonna move the camera around uh, using animation value. So we need to set the property. And what we wanna do is take the position z and we'll change that so the camera moves in and out. We'll use a couple other properties of the float animation. We'll do an auto reverse this time We'll set the duration to be five seconds. We'll keep it disabled for now. We'll set it enabled uh, using the checkbox. And we want it to loop. And then we'll set the value to start uh, at zero, zero. So it's gonna set position Z to zero. Uh, X and Y position of the camera already zero, zero. And we'll go out to uh, a stop value of minus 80. So we'll move far away and then it should come back again. And since we've got it set to loop, it should keep going in and out and in and out. And then over on the checkbox, we've added the code to enable animation three when the checkbox is checked. So let's take a look at this. So here we are really close and we're going away. And then the auto reverse happens and we come back in and we go past it. Actually it looks like we went right through the planet Earth. And again, remember that uh, you can use the design camera on the form down here. And you can also have multiple cameras. In this case, we had camera one and camera two. And you could choose that. So you might even have multiple cameras with multiple views uh, in your 3D application. So that's some more that you can do with FireMonkey 3D on Windows and on Macintosh.